Hello, welcome to this presentation by Trinet Internet Solutions. We are so glad to have you. This presentation is laser focused on helping ministries do donor development online, which is particularly helpful for this season where online has become everything. So we are very excited for this presentation and we would also like to welcome you, say hello, and please do the same, say hello to us in the comments. There's a comment chat bar right there and go ahead and, and say hello, say, say where you're watching from. Uh, we wanna just greet you as you come in. And I see Renee has already said, hello, Renee here. Hello, Renee. Excellent, Sid says, hello. It is a pleasure to have all of you here in this presentation. And my name is Gregory Sukert, and I am an engagement manager here at Trina Internet Solutions. And with us, we have our digital marketing expert ninja, Ron Weber. He's our chief operating officer. Go ahead and say hello, Ron. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Ron is truly very keen on all things digital marketing and working alongside him is a pleasure and he's worked very hard on putting this presentation together and uh, you're going to get a lot of value and that's going to be our pleasure because and is our pleasure because we particularly have a heart for ministries those who are doing the lord's work and we cannot tell you how grateful we are to be helping through this presentation. See some more people saying hello. Rosa says hello, watching from sunny California. Hi, Rosa. Carol says hi. Jim says hi from San Clemente. Hello, Jim. Great. Well, if you are tired of losing out on new donors, tired of not having a systematic way to find new donors, to attract them, to inspire them with your cause, particularly as it relates to online, then you have come to the right place we really hope to address. And we know this presentation will address many of those pain points that will help you get out of the rut, identify new donors, nurture these donors, and build long lasting relationships with them. I see some more people saying hello. Hi, Barbara. And uh, this presentation is entitled how to stop losing donor leads using a digital lead generation vortex. And that's a big word right there, digital lead generation vortex. You may be asking, what is that? Well, it's here to help you. And you're gonna learn what exactly that is through this presentation. And so we are so excited to present this to you. And just as a continued expression of our thankfulness and our desire to help, uh, we will be giving away a special gift to all who stay to the end of the presentation. So you're going to want to stick around for that treat. So if you want to engage with us, feel free to do so by engaging in the comment section. It's there on the right. If you're on desktop, it should be on the bottom there if you are on mobile. So this shows you exactly where to engage with us. Feel free to ask questions along the way. We will be doing a Q&A at the end of the presentation. So we want to engage with all of you and make sure that we get your questions answered. A little bit about us, a little bit about Trina Internet Solutions, uh, our company that is putting on this presentation is we are headquartered in Orange County, California. We are an industry leading award-winning full service digital agency for over 25 years and a lot has changed in that 25 years. So what we're presenting today is the culmination of the most important things that we have seen work, that are working and are most relevant to helping you today. And our years of experience allows us to provide that to you. We are special experts in websites, apps, channels and innovative digital campaigns that continue to create industry benchmarks. And we have expert capabilities, particularly in strategy, design, execution, marketing, and digital lead generation. And before we continue, we'd like to just play a video for you that further introduces 
you to our company and how we are so excited about serving you and your ministry through this presentation. So go ahead and tune into the video here. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire. I'm the founder and the president of Revival Outside the Walls. We build a global brand and another life. We're visionaries. We're passionate. We've always worked with the best people we could possibly find to get us to where we want to go. We looked around. Who's the best digital marketing company we could possibly work with? And wherever we went, we kept hearing this name, Trident, Trident, Trident. And I have to tell you, we're having so much fun working with the people at Trident. They have so much talent. I mean, we're outside the box all the time, but they're even ahead of us. And the magic that takes place in our meetings. It's just amazing. You know, we're now two years into this process and they're no longer a vendor. I mean, they're our friends, our buddies. They're always plusing what we're saying. I love the fact that while they are big and they have these great ideas, they get it. I mean, they fall down in detail to do everything we want to do beyond what we want to do. It's great and easy to have big ideas, but they make them happen. You know, the hotspot for us, of course, is the whole digital world, all aspects of social media, Trinet's building a phone app for us that will blow you away. It is the most exciting digital phenomena I have ever seen. There's internet, TV, there's all aspects of new technology coming and what well, we have great people in-house. It is the inexhaustible resources of Trinet that are gonna make it possible for us to achieve our dreams. So if you have big dreams for your business, if you wanna get new customers online, you wanna tap into new technology, Sure, you can do a sound yourself, but you can't do all of it. That's why you need Trinet. <laughs>
both stimulate and capture interest in your ministry or your nonprofit for the purpose of developing donors that will help you to accomplish your mission. And the interesting thing to note is the whole donor development process has really changed. And as a result of that, because of the economy and what's going on with, uh, uh, with everything going on right now, there's a need to find new ways to reach prospective donors and to get heard through the noise. So instead of focusing on one digital platform, the digital lead generation vortex combines a number of different steps together in a very strategic way to, uh, in order to identify first off, to convert, and then to nurture those continuous relationships with donors. So next is what is the structure of a, of a digital donor lead generation vortex? What, what does that look like? Well, there's three key components. And the, the key here is that they're all tied together in a strategic and a very holistic way. So let's talk about what the, what the three components are. First off, step one is the step where we're using digital tools to number one, seek, the second is to qualify, and the third is to target those prospective donors, looking for the right audience, using the right platform to do that. Step two is then engaging, nurturing, and educating those uh, prospective donors about your ministry and, uh, and sharing that passion in an authentic way that engages them to further interact. Step three then is then is the call to action and the follow-up and reaching out and continuing to build and grow that digital relationship. So the, the next slide, it, it, we, we mentioned how important it is to take a holistic and a deep approach to developing a vortex. And the reason that's important is each of these steps that I described in the previous slide uses different tools, different digital tools in order to accomplish that particular step. And if you just do one of them by themselves, you don't get the full benefit of using them all together. And so we see many people using maybe one of the, of the steps uh, in, for example, in digital advertising or lead, or lead seeking options. But there is some issues with doing that. It, it's important to know how to use these digital tools properly to get optimal uh, audience targeting. And unfortunately, a lot of ministries and even businesses for that matter uh, are not using these the full uh, power of these platforms to be able to target and find the right audience. And as a result, most of these campaigns are doing very poorly and worse, they're wasting money and they're not reaching the right target. So it's important to be able to know how to do this. And second, very few of them are doing a good job in, in tying the different steps in these funnels or in these vortexes together uh, to seek, then nurture, then engage uh, with digital tools such as webinars or eBooks uh, or uh, other methods to, to, to be able to continually bring in new prospective donors. And very, very few, I'd say almost none, are tying all the steps from step one to step three together in a way that is creating a consistent call to action, a consistent follow-up and a consistent follow through. So that's why, and, and the reason we bring that up is on, on the next slide, we, we've, we've seen a, uh, how important it is to have that holistic end-to-end tie-in between step one, step two, and step three, and there's poor throughput as a result of that if they're not tied together. In fact, we see a much higher, a significantly higher conversion rate in the five to 10% uh, range if you tie the three steps together as opposed to just using one of the steps. Uh, and that's the key point here is that tying them all together and, and doing it in a strategic way is the key to getting great conversions and great results. 
And so, um, and, and we mentioned that on the next slide as well, that, that key is that is to link and tie the steps together to do it in a very strategic way and forming a beginning to end vortex that then successfully attracts, nurtures, and closes those donor leads on an ongoing basis. So next, we wanna talk about the first step. So let's dive into a little bit more detail. The first step is the step where we're seeking, we're qualifying, and we're targeting. And so there's key ways to do that. Uh, on the next slide, we talk about the various ways that, that the tools that are available to us as a ministry to be able to do that. So let's go through high level what those are. First off, our display ads. Those are, uh, most of you are familiar with those as banners that can appear on websites via display network. So that's one method we can, we can use. The second is social media. And the way to use social media, and I'm not talking about just doing posts on social media, I'm talking about using social media as an advertising platform. Very, very different than just posting on your, on your social media page. The, the social media platforms are very, have very powerful targeting algorithms. And if you know how to use them the right way, you can get very good results. So these are ads that are displayed in networks such as Facebook and Instagram. They would show up in your, in your feeds. LinkedIn is another one. The third is video ads, uh, particularly on YouTube, some other platforms as well. And those are the most common ones that you see are, are pre-roll ads. So these are the ads that show in YouTube before you get to watch the video that you've uh, chosen to watch. Mid-roll ads, which are ads that can appear uh, interspersed in the video that we're watching, or end-roll ads. And there you can also do banner ads as well uh, in YouTube. So that's another important uh, platform. And YouTube is a very powerful a uh, platform that is not very well used by ministries uh, and the, the targeting options are just amazing. The fourth area is search engine ads. Of course, these are ads that you would have on Google, Bing. These are uh, paid keyword ads that can promote content through searches and ultimately get people to your website. Of course, there these are paid uh, ads, uh, of course, uh, you can also do search engine optimization, which are organic. Those are a little bit more challenging to be able to get ranking on, but certainly uh, from an advertising standpoint, search engine ads are an important component to think about in certain instances. Next are native ads, and these are usually recommended content on a web page or on a, a social media network. So native ads are yet another important one. And then finally, we have uh, sponsored ads or, or partnerships where we're getting promotion through another blog, through a networker, or through a network, I should say, or through uh, a ministry partner or an influencer. And you're, you're, you're uh, partnering together with another ministry to be able to do that. Well, Gregory's going to talk next on the next slide of ways to seek out donors online. And that is the question, isn't it? Isn't that what we're all asking? If, if you've come here because you're wondering how you can seek out donors online, go ahead and just type yes. If that is a burden that you have, is that if that is a pain point that you are trying to overcome, finding and seeking out new donors online, just comment yes. We want to know uh, who here is sharing in that burden. And as you're commenting, we'll show you some ways that we found that work really, really well. I see Barbara says yes. Renee says yes. Yes. I mean, that is a big thing that we need to overcome. So ways to seek out donors online. The first is search engine optimization, writing content so that it is seen. Uh, we've seen that if content is not ranked on search engines, it is very, very unlikely to ever be discovered via search. And so you need to make sure uh, that you are following best practices when it comes to search engine optimization. And that includes a wide gamma of things from researching keywords 
that your prospective donors are searching for? What do they care about? What are the struggles they have? What ways are they trying to see the world change? And those are the types of answers. Those are the types of things you need to address and give to attract potential donors to your ministry. Another key way to seek out donors online is not just organic search engines, which could include Google search, Bing search, as well as YouTube search as the second largest search engine, but search engine marketing in general could be bidding for ads within search engines. You know, when you search a keyword on Google, you don't just see the organic results, you also see paid results. And there are a lot of organizations and even nonprofits who leverage that to get discovered by donors and ministries need to as well. Pay-per-click is any time we are bidding for advertising to get traffic to our website. As Ron mentioned, it is a waste of money to just willy-nilly go advertising without a plan, without understanding the targeting capabilities of many of these platforms. And so having strategic pay-per-click media buy for ministries is a great way. And just as an example, did you know that you can target people who follow ministries that are similar to yours. For example, if you are an evangelistic ministry and perhaps you even know of a man named Greg Laurie, Pastor Greg Laurie, who's the pastor of Harvest Church in Southern California, every year he does a big evangelistic crusade called Harvest Crusade. And it attracts tens and tens and tens of thousands of people to come to a stadium and hear the gospel. And right now he's even using clever digital techniques to get the gospel out. And you as a ministry, if you are also engaged in the work of evangelism, you can target people who follow Greg Laurie online. And so that's why pay-per-click, strategic pay-per-click is very advantageous for ministries. Social media optimization, knowing which platforms your donors are on and knowing which ones they are not on will save you a lot of time and wasted resources. I think one of the biggest mistakes that we've seen ministries make is feeling like they have to tackle every single social media network that exists. If a new one comes up, you just have to jump on it and you have to start creating content and you have to burn out, spread your team thin. Well, I wanna give you some relief. Ron and I wanna give you some relief right now. You don't have to do that. You do not. Hear me out, you do not have to engage on every social media platform. You only need to engage in the ones that your donors are using, which you can find out via surveys, via talking on the phone with donors, getting to know more about them. It's, it's not hard to find that data, you just have to be intentional about seeking it. And then social media advertising, of course, we've talked about not just advertising to reach people with interests, but there are many other capabilities that these social media networks have that we will get into. And I do see that a lot more people have typed, yes, that uh, there's, there's a struggle to get, to get donors online. And that's why we're here. That's at the end of this presentation, it's something's gonna click for you and go, okay, I understand a cohesive strategy that's simple, that's easy to follow, and that creates ongoing donor leads for my ministry. So another key component of finding donors online is having landing pages and microsites. Landing pages are what we can categorically define as a page that is specifically designed to reach and nurture the exact person that you are targeting online. One of the biggest mistakes that ministries make when it comes to their website and when it comes to driving traffic is sending traffic generically to a homepage. That is a big no-no. And your website has likely very many pages on it. When somebody's new, they don't need to get lost in all of that. You might have pages that are certainly written for new people, but you're gonna have a lot of content on there that might be for people who are already donors. And that content's not relevant to a new person who you're trying to get to become a donor. So you don't want them to get lost and to leave the website because 
your website didn't speak to them with where they are at. So dedicated landing pages and microsites put you in a prime position to drive more leads, more donors. Studies show that marketers and ministries capture leads at higher rates by sending them to dedicated landing pages rather than sending traffic to the homepage. So that landing page is specifically designed to say hello, to give an introductory impact statement on what your ministry does in a very clear and tangible way with no other calls to action for them to get lost in the mix, but just to drive them singularly towards an introductory message for your ministry. And that is gonna vastly improve results in advertising and traffic campaigns. There's also social media targeting, and we wanna introduce you to three very, very important forms of social media targeting. Many people know about one of them, but it's the other two that are very powerful, particularly for ministries. The first is interest-based targeting, and that's exactly what we mentioned earlier with the scenario, Greg Laurie, Harvest Ministries. If you are an evangelistic ministry, you can target followers of Harvest and of Greg Laurie and people who are interested in the cause of evangelism. And if that's what your ministry is about, it's very likely you're reaching a good audience that you can then nurture to support your cause. So you can target people who have interests. You can also target people based on their behavior. You can target based off of how much time they spend online, how much activity they have, on what device they, they are keen to use, whether it be iPhone or Android. You can target specific behaviors. Social media is very, very powerful for allowing you to create custom donor profiles and to find new people who meet those criteria based upon your research. Another very important form of social media targeting, and this one is one that is largely, largely neglected by ministries, is lookalike audiences. And this is where you get to target people who are very similar to current donors. And the way this works is with Facebook and LinkedIn and a lot of these digital ad platforms, you can actually provide a seed list to these networks, let's say your donor list. And Facebook or LinkedIn, they will take that list, go through every email address, try to match it to see if that email can be matched with a Facebook or LinkedIn profile, then it will find all the behavior, all the interests of that user, and it will compare it to everyone else on your donor list. And what that will do is they will start to find commonalities. Oh, all the people on your donor list have these certain commonalities. And what these networks will do then is create a whole new list of brand new people who all share those same commonalities as your current donors, which is immensely powerful for finding new donors online. That's not something we want to neglect as we seek to find and bring people into the impact of our ministry. And then retargeting. Retargeting is a third one that is often neglected by ministries. And that is where you actually have the ability to retarget people who have taken certain actions with your ministry online. For example, if you have somebody who comes to your donate page online, but who does but who does not donate, you can actually take that data and retarget to them, meaning your ads can reach only them. So you're not reaching current donors, but you're reaching people who visited your donate page to say, hey, we saw that you were considering supporting with our ministry. We wanna give you some impactful testimonies for you to consider. Would love to partner alongside you in this great work. And that is so, so powerful for reaching people when you can know the exact people who are coming on your site, who are not taking action, and then you get to reach them again to nurture them to do so. Another big form of reaching new people is what's called content marketing. And content marketing is where we create content that gets the attention of new donors online. And content creation, let me tell you, it, this is the ultimate form of inbound marketing. This is the ultimate form of bringing people to your ministry. Because when you create content, you're creating something that people are hungry for. People are spending more time right now 
ever online. And they are looking for content that will inform them, that will educate them, that will even to some degree be entertaining to them because of the personalities behind the content. And when your ministry provides that, you can attract potential donors, especially when your content is all surrounding topics that they care immensely about. And content marketing is not just great for attracting potential donors, but it's great for nurturing them to become donors and also retaining donors. And there are many forms of content that we can create as ministries. We can create blogs, we can create podcasts, we can create webinars like what you're seeing right now, videos, social media posts, eBooks and slideshows. Uh, and before I continue, I just wanna, I wanna ask you a question. Which one do you think is the most effective? If you had to pick one of these on this list for engaging and nurturing with prospective donors, which one do you think on that list to the left is the most effective? We wanna know, what do you think? Well, wait a second and uh, we'll give our answer because uh, we really do wanna help you. We want to, to be a force of helping think these things through so that you can have the most impact with the ministry that God has entrusted to you. Okay, I'm not seeing answers. People are people are thinking it through. Oh, okay, we see social media posts. Okay, Renee says videos. Good. Rosa says videos. All right, people are getting a little less nervous. You know, they want to make sure their answer is the right one. But Ron, we're nice people. We're not gonna we're not gonna criticize if anyone has the wrong answer. We're here to help. We're here to help. Okay, well let's 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 share. This. Jim Jim says social media posts. Okay, we also see another social media post. Okay, great. Okay, these are great answers. These are good. And, and of, of those on the list, that is, these are certainly the ones met, uh, put on there are effective ones. But the one that uh, we recommend really the most uh, is webinars. Uh, and why webinars? Uh, well, we're gonna get to that. Uh, just remember that, tuck that away uh, in your memory bank because that is one that we see being highly impactful right now. Okay, so now we move on to step two. We've talked about how we can find new donors. Now we wanna talk about how to engage, nurture, and educate them. And here we are. Remember I said, tuck that away? Well, you didn't have to wait too long. Here we are, live webinars. Live webinars are incredible and they are so powerful because they provide the opportunity to teach our donor prospects and to help them understand why our ministry is valuable in the first place. And what's so amazing about webinars is they're not only great for attracting new donors because you can host a webinar on a meaningful topic that's related to your ministry that your potential donor cares about. They'll register as a lead for your webinar. But so it's not only a great attracting mechanism, but in the same medium, it's also a great nurturing mechanism because they get to see you. They get to see statistics. They get to see testimonies. You can play videos like we've played on this webinar. And most importantly, they get to see your passion. They get to see your heart behind this cause that you are involved with and what God is, is doing through you and through your ministry. And so webinars allow you to build this this face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, and if you're not having their face online, you can at least participate in the comments. You can answer questions real time. And there's just really nothing like it online for being able to personally engage people. And then you personally get to invite them at the end of the webinar to become a partner after spending a decent amount of time in a 45 minute, 30 minute hour webinar, that's a decent amount of time to walk alongside someone and show them your heart, show them why this ministry is worth investing in. And so that's why live webinars are really one of our favorites and what we think is the most effective for attracting donors and nurturing them to become donors. Another important tool is automated emails. And what are they? What are automated emails? Well, email automated platforms are super powerful it's very likely that your ministry right now has a email newsletter and that's fantastic. That is excellent. You should keep growing that, keep inviting people to be a part of that. But what a lot of ministries neglect are the email automation aspects of many of these email platforms, for example, like MailChimp and many other of the common ones. Did you know that they actually have automation in place 
where you can create series of emails that automatically get dripped to people and sent to people based upon their interaction with your ministry. For example, if you have somebody who's just being introduced to your ministry, they sign up for your newsletter, you can actually already have a five email automated series built in place that sends a new email to them on five separate days, maybe over the course of two weeks, and you can introduce them to your ministry and nurture them alongside why they should support your ministry through each and every one of those emails. And one email could contain statistics. One email can contain testimonies. Uh, one email could contain the future. What is the plan? Why should someone support now? What are the projects that you're currently working on and want to work on? And so a series like that is very powerful for nurturing and automated emails they're they're carefully planned they're meant to be sent to specific people at specific times to nurture them into becoming donors and what's really cool is if you want to get really sophisticated with it a lot of these email platforms have built in code that you can put on your website so that when an email subscriber is looking at a particular page on your website let's say the donate page your email platform will automatically get that based on their IP address and send them an email if they did not complete a donation. It could be something like, hey, we saw you were looking at our donate page. Are there any questions you have? We'd love to help and we'd love to talk to you. And that is really, really powerful for nurturing prospects into donors. And why use them? Well, according to the Epsilon Email Institute, triggered emails have a 70.5% higher open rate and 152% higher click-through rate than generic email newsletters. So you really wanna see higher engagement with your ministry. You're gonna to wanna to use email automation that's sent to the right people at the right time. Another key component of nurturing people into becoming donors, nurturing your leads that you've attracted to becoming donors are ministry partners. And ministry partners can really help not just to nurture, but also to attract. They're great for both of those. Uh, and being, we know this, being introduced to new prospective donors is a never ending challenge. That's why we're all here. But ministry partners can help significantly. Ministry partners are current supporters who are already invested in your ministry. Meaning if you have a list of donors, these are people that you wanna leverage to promote the content and the things that you are already creating, particularly, again, webinars, as we see them as very effective. So whenever you release a new blog, a new podcast, or you're hosting a new webinar that's meant to introduce people to your ministry, ask your partners, ask the people who are already invested to share it with their network, to email it out, even give them a template that they can send and just plug and play with a first name uh, that they can use to make it easy for them to share your ministry's content with other donors in their network. And if you have a friend too, this is another way that you can have ministry partnership, not just with current supporters, but also if you have a friend who's involved with another ministry and they have an audience of their own, ask if you can partner together, ask if you can partner by sharing each other's content, by sharing each other's webinar events, because if they have an audience of 5,000 people, you have an audience of two or 10,000 people, you can work together, you share some of their content, they share some of your content in newsletters, on social media, and you get to you both get to benefit. And so we really do recommend using ministry partners and thinking through your network on how you can leverage not only new people to be introduced to your ministry, but how they can be nurtured to become donors. And then remarketing, we did talk a little bit about that with social media. This is just another concept that we really want to drive home for nurturing donations. Remarketing is very important. And again, remarketing is defined as when somebody has already subscribed to your newsletter or they've already been to your website or they've interacted with you on social media, you want to reach them again because one time, a one time interaction is, is not enough most of the time. And the marketing rule of seven states that it takes an average of seven interactions with your ministry before a donation will take place. So remarketing is a way to help you initiate that process, that seven touch point process faster than you could by not planning out a remarketing strategy. Remarketing allows you to capture the attention of your visitors to your website, email list subscribers, social media followers who have not taken action. And this type of marketing really does help strategically position your 
nonprofit and your ministry, your ads for increased convergence, increased awareness, and will establish your ministry as a thought leader in your industry, which is very important for building trust that will lead to donations. And then the last big thing that we want to introduce you to for nurturing, that is a very important component uh, for getting donations and converting leads into donors is online reviews. Online reviews are very important. And whether you like it or not, online reviews are a massive part of all of our ministries. Uh, what you do uh, will eventually make, make an opinion online. That's just an inevitable part of being in ministry. I mean, there are even biblical concepts that, that talk about, do not be surprised if the world hates you and people are evil and sometimes, and they want to slander. Uh, and so it's really important to keep an eye out on online reviews, uh, particularly on nonprofit review sites like Charity Navigator. Uh, this is an example of Ligonier Ministries. It's a Christian ministry that produces wonderful Christian teaching and content. And they, they have good reviews. And so you want to make sure that, one, you're watching the reviews that are being put out there so that you can know how to appropriately respond. And two, you want to make sure that you're being proactive and getting positive reviews, whether that be directly reviews that you feature on your website from current donors who you want to give testimonials from, or on official sites like Charity Navigator that aggregate reviews of people and, and their interactions with your nonprofit, your ministry. So when you do this, when you engage with an online review strategy and you're keeping track of this and you're, you're thinking through these things, you will have a, a more positive perception online. You will be able to build more trust online. You'll also have a great benefit when it comes to search engine optimization because reviews left on other websites are great referrals that will bring new traffic to your website. You're, you'll be discovered more in search engines, but most importantly, Re reviews will help you build trust. They'll help you build visibility and they will help you get more donations. And that's what we really, really want you to have. Well, let's jump in next with step three, which is calls to action. So what are some important uh, tactics, steps that work for ministries to engage donors and prospective donors? Well, first off, uh, matching campaigns is a tried and true uh, technique that works very well when you promote a donate uh, a donation matching campaign. And again, these are calls to action that would be perhaps at the end of a webinar. They might be as part of a, an, uh, they might be a call to action that are part of a recurring email, but these are ones that will draw more people in to support your organization. And uh, tip, you know, increased traffic will typically lead to increased donations. And your prospective donors will not only look to support your matching campaigns, but they're going to be more likely to do so when you have a matching campaign because there's that urgency, there's that uh, extra push. And so you'll see that many ministries will use that as, a, uh, as an extra incentive to encourage people to give. Uh, because you're, of course, whatever you give, if there's a matching, uh, a matching uh, campaign that's running, your donation is multiplied. So that's a very powerful way of uh, encouraging donors to give. <clears throat> Next is free downloadables, and we've uh, we've seen this work very well. Uh, an idea of a free downloadable could be an ebook. It could be a bookmark. It could be uh, any one of a number of things that, that in exchange for an email address, you get a free ebook. And, and so that has worked really well to grow email lists. It could be a, a digital gift that people will receive by signing up for your list. And it's, it's much more effective than just a, an email, a generic email sign up. Form, and it really can help you nurture leads because the ebook can be used to tell about your ministry or to educate. Uh, here's a, a, an example of, uh, of uh, an ebook from Ray Comfort uh, where you can download that free ebook. So, what are some other ideas as, to use as free downloadables 
as a call to action? Well, one is reference sheets and checklists. So this might be a, a sheet, uh, maybe it, it could be uh, how to share your testimony, five ways to share your testimony, or uh, five ways uh, you can have an impact on uh, reaching more people for Christ. Or there's a number of them that, that have worked really well. Uh, also, I mentioned bookmarks are, are work really well with uh, inspiring verses on them. So any kind of reference sheet or checklist are great. Uh, you can also use them to, to remind ongoing tasks, or perhaps a prayer list or a prayer reminder. Next are templates. Templates are tools that your audience can, can use to uh, more easily take action. So that might be, uh, for example, a prayer calendar or, or something of that sort where you can provide dates and, and items to pray for over a period of time. A, a good example of a template. Next is video training. This, is, this could be uh, free training to perhaps how to share your testimony. Uh, it, it could be uh, how to counsel someone. Uh, so any kind of a free video training series uh, related to your ministry and, uh, and to give it away via an email signup can be a very powerful way to reach and nurture prospective donors. The next idea is introductory experience. So uh, for example, uh, let's say you have a tracked sample pack where you might have uh, examples of, of tracks that can be given out. That's a, a great example of a, of a sample, ways of providing uh, introductory experience to potential donors, or it could be even a package that that could be sent out to existing donors to help them to introduce the ministry to their friends. Uh, for example, here's an example of ministry that runs online ads to reach non-Christians with the gospel could invite a prospective donor to a live webinar where the prospect can see how the ads get set up behind the scenes. And so, for example, if, if perhaps your ministry makes evangelistic tracts uh, or other types of, of uh, short downloadables, you can give away track sample packs to those prospective donors as well. And so once a, a prospect, once a prospect experiences the ministry through these, uh, through these samples, uh, they're more likely to become donors of the ministry because they see the heart of the ministry and, and what the ministry is doing. Next example uh, idea is eBooks. And we've seen this being used very well. It could be a chapter, it could be an entire ebook, and this is educational. It helps to educate uh, that prospective donor perhaps about the ministry or about uh, perhaps it's how to pray. Uh, perhaps it's uh, how you can have an impact on reaching more people for Christ. Uh, ebooks are a great uh, lead magnet you can offer. They, uh, you know, make sure they have some, some great value and are instructional. They help to encourage and they help to teach uh, your prospective donors. And they give your, your lead something more valuable and, and informative. And an ebook can show authority. It can help to position you as a thought leader on the topic. And uh, it can be, it helps to grow your email list, subscriber list, uh, it can expand uh, knowledge of what your ministry is doing and invite people to take action. The next idea is chatbots. And ministries can, can, there's no reason why ministries can't use chatbots to call people to action, uh, answer common questions they might have about the ministry, uh, even ask donations and, uh, and help save time. And they can be used on a, on a website to provide fast, automated answers to most questions. The example uh, that's visible there on your right is actually a, a chat bot that's on the Harvest website. And their uh, uh, chat concierge is called Ben Born Again. And you ask questions and it can answer common things like, what time are services? How can I make a donation? Uh, so it answers common questions and it prevents donors or, or prospects from waiting a day or longer to receive responses they need to make a donation decision. So that's a great way of using chatbots. 
I'm going to have Gregory now walk through, we've talked earlier about webinars and I want to talk, uh, we want to talk about that ho holistic process, step one, step two, step three, and how that's done from beginning to end with uh, digital advertising to find the donor or the potential donor with a webinar and then with the automated follow-up. Okay, so we're going to put this all together for you. Everything that you've seen put together in a practical digital donor lead generation funnel for you to see all on one screen. And so the way it works is, as Ron said, let's imagine we are hosting a webinar that is going to introduce new people to our ministry and we are trying to fundraise for a specific goal. The example we have here is to get audio Bibles that we could bring Christianity to 3000 unreached villages that have never experienced, have never seen a Bible, have never experienced a missionary coming. We want to get these audio Bibles. So that's the event that we're promoting, how that can be accomplished. We're gonna do, do it through a webinar, but before we're gonna advertise. And so we're gonna run online ads and we're gonna do all the best practices, interest-based targeting, targeting people who are interested in evangelistic organizations, evangelism as a topic, who are interested in missions. We're gonna target those people. We're also gonna do lookalike audience targeting of our current donors. And we're also gonna do retargeting of people who have expressed interest in our ministry before, but who have not donated. And we're gonna take all that traffic and we're gonna send it to a landing page that promotes the webinar. And so we have this landing page example here. We have very clear call to action. We're talking about the benefits. We have a video about our ministry. We have a very clear one, two, and three of what they're gonna learn. We even introduced the featured speaker and we introduce them to the ministry and really get visitors excited about the webinar. Notice this is just a single landing page. There is no menu like a website where they can go to other pages. There is only one call to action that we are driving on that landing page and that is to sign up for the webinar. And if you want to even go super advanced and keep converting, keep engaging people, have more people attend the webinar, you can even put a chat bot on this page so that people can ask questions and then sign up. Then you take them to your live or pre-recorded webinar. You can do it pre-recorded. Uh, obviously, we think the best is live because they get to see uh, your energy, even though you might be a little nervous. You know, sometimes nerves uh, are really good to be channeled into excitement and energy that is infectious and will get people excited about the ministry. And so you have this whole presentation, you walk people through A to Z, what you're doing, what you're fundraising for, you're being very specific in your ask, you are playing testimonies, you are reading testimonies at a minimum, you're giving stats, you're, you're really addressing all the things that people need to know in a 30 to an hour minute presentation. And then once that webinar is done, you are giving a specific call to action to invite new partners. You're gonna invite them to donate. And if they don't donate on this live webinar, then you are going to have email automation in place that automatically triggers emails that encourages people to donate. You can have a two to three to five post webinar email series that continues to nurture those who attended the webinar to donate. So this is how it all gets put together into a powerful digital lead generation vortex for finding donors. And to summarize it again, visually, these are just three simple steps that being specific for each step and putting them together, tying them together from beginning to end will get you way more results than just attacking these platforms individually and hoping for results. So that's the process, that's the secret sauce, that's what we want to leave you with here today. And next, I'm gonna talk about, well, you know, should you get help setting up and running a lead generation vortex? And, and what does that look like? And so some questions you might ask could be, uh, can I create a, a, a donor lead generation vortex on my own? How, how do I get started? Uh, how quickly can this be set up so that I can, you know, I'm no, no longer missing out on valuable donors and, and leads. So let, let's touch on that briefly. Uh, so, one of the things that Trinet 
does, and, and we've outlined the, the how you go about doing that and, and what, that, uh, what that looks like, what the different steps are and what's important in each step. Uh, what we do at Trinet is we work specifically with Christian evangelical ministries all across the country. Uh, we've been blessed to work with ministries like uh, Billy Graham and Focus on the Family, uh, Trinity Broadcasting, uh, ministries large and small to help them think through a strategic digital roadmap. Where are they right now? Where do they want to be a year from now, two years from now, and so on? And what's involved in reaching those audiences and which uh, w which platforms should they be using? We do digital strategy pivot consulting. Many ministries are finding that in this environment, they have to quickly pivot and they have to change the way they're doing things. They, uh, For example, they may not be able to do in-person uh, banquets and, and donor dinners anymore. Now there's a way of doing that online with webinars. Uh, they're, they're having challenges even reaching out and finding donors and, and, and talking to them using digital tools. We've found means to do that by creating these funnels or vortexes that are always bringing in new donors and new prospective donors. Digital advertising, email list growth, email automation, website redesign. So are all of these, could you do all of these yourself? Well, yes, but what we see is we're often called in to help ministries who have tried it and are struggling because they they were, they, all they got was mediocre results and they got very limited success. Uh, there's the, the steps by themselves are simple, but the idea is to, put them all together in order to get the maximum return and the maximum number of touches. Gregory mentioned earlier an important marketing principle is those seven touches. Well, if you're only doing one of these steps, you're not going to get to the seven touches. You have to pull them all together and make sure they all work together. And so that's what we do. We, uh, we help uh, ministries create that holistic end-to-end -end, uh, vortex we help them plan it. We help them with the messaging. We help them set it up and we help them run it. Uh, we do we do training. We, uh, we'll we run the campaigns for them. This is what we do. We've had a great, we continue to have a wonderful and very successful track record in doing that. And uh, we'd love to have the opportunity to do that for your ministry as well. We have that knowledge and that experience to make sure that you're not making the same mistakes and, and that you get the best results. And what we found uh, is that the real difference is that the having the strategy and tying it all together from end to end, and that's where you get the difference ultimately in the return on investment. We typically see at, at most a uh, 3% to 5% return on investments on these campaigns if you do a poor job of implementing them or you don't tie them together versus if you, if you plan things, that's where you get the good results and you put it all together and you tie it all together. And that's where we can come in to help. So just to summarize, I want to give you some key takeaways to think about. So first off, you know, what is a digital lead generation, uh, a donor generation vortex? It, it's a, it's a process that ties together a number of different digital marketing tools, strategies, techniques together in a way that makes one plus one equal three so that you get the, you, you can increase the, the conversion, increase the response by doing it together. So it skyrockets those efforts to attract nurture and to close donor lead. Secondly, it's very critical to know how to design audience targeting. Many ministries get get uh, tripped up because they don't know how to properly use the advertising engines, whether it's in Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn to properly target. And so that's where they're wasting or losing a lot of money because they haven't had the experience uh, to be able to do it the right way and to set it up and to message it and to test it. Number three, uh, we've talked about live webinars and automated emails, ministry partners, remarketing, online reviews, how these are powerful ways to nurture donor leads online. Number four, it's important and I, it's, it's amazing how many campaigns I see that do not have strong calls to action. You need a, a good call to action 
And even more important, you need to have great follow-up and using automated means to be able to do that is the key to be able to getting that greater conversion rate, keeping that momentum uh, that, that is gained from that initial uh, attracting and nurturing an audience to actually uh, having that donor become uh, a friend or a supporter of the ministry. And number five, um, you know, get if, if you're struggling, get professional help to help you link and to tie every step together in, in your marketing funnel. And this this can help you to, to create that and beginning to end vortex that that is successfully nurturing, re-nurturing and closing donor leads on an ongoing basis. So those are some key summaries and takeaways. And so, you know, it's time to now it's time to launch your uh, your donor your digital donor lead generation vortex and uh, uh, we would love to help you do that uh, if you've got any question now Gregory I know we have a special offer maybe let's uh, uh, we can we can touch on that right now yeah wanted to give all of you uh, a big thank you and a big encouragement we love what you're doing uh, we're so thankful for you and the ministry that God has provided to you as steward and as a big thank you and as a, a big expression of our desire to help we want to give you right now uh, a free gift and it is actually going to be this entire presentation this is the culmination of uh, where we're at and what we're seeing produce the best results right now uh, and after 25 years being in the industry we want to just give you this presentation as a roadmap to help your ministry. So go ahead and look on the screen. You should see in the file section a way to download this presentation. And so please do that. Use it. Use it as a roadmap of where your ministry needs to go online to generate donors. And on top of that, to continually show our desire to help and to see your ministry succeed, we want to give you a special offer only for everyone on this webinar, it's only for those who are attending right now who are watching this, you are able to get a one hour free consultation with Ron where he will answer any questions you have about getting this started. He'll answer any questions you have about any part of your digital lead generation donor funnel, any questions you have about finding, nurturing, converting. So I'm putting that up on the screen right now. So go ahead and only for those in this webinar, click that button, go to our website, submit through our contact form, let us know that you watch this webinar and you will get a free one hour consultation to get help for your digital lead generation vortex and finding new donors online. And as you can imagine, this is a busy season for a digital agency, but we do want to give this to you as a special Thank you for attending this and for trying to be good stewards of the ministry that God has entrusted to you. So with that, with, we just got a few minutes left. Uh, and I'll also like to jump in and say we have an additional special offer. Uh, any ministries that would uh, like to uh, engage with Trinet, uh, before the end of July, we will offer a special 10% uh, ministry grant that can be put to uh, put towards uh, paying for any Trinet services uh, that you purchase. So an additional uh, special surprise offer there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that was coming. All right, there you have it. Special surprise. So please take, take use of all these resources right here at your fingertips and these opportunities to fund the ministry that God has given you right now. Would love to spend the last few minutes we have in Q and A. So we'll start with some of the questions I see here, starting with Carol. How is a donor generation vortex different from other types of donor generation techniques? Great question. Uh, one of the key differences is is a vortex has multiple places where it's attracting and and bringing in new prospective donors. It, it uses multiple avenues as opposed to a single avenue uh, to attract those leads. For example, uh, just using email versus using a digital advertising and webinars, using remarketing, using then follow-up email, using a variety of, of 
digital techniques together as opposed to just using one type of method. Uh, tying them together is what we have found works uh, more powerfully. Secondly, uh, we found that uh, focusing on using live and, uh, and, and, and replay webinar events has also worked very, very well as that, as that primary means of engaging with those donor prospects. And why, is, why have we found that, that webinars have worked so well? Uh, we have some theories. We, we think it has to do with the engagement. We think webinars can, can provide a means for ministry leaders to really show their passion. What, what are they passionate about? Why are they passionate about that? And that comes through in a in a live webinar in ways that we just haven't seen on on using other methods, whether it's written or or even pre-recorded video. So that enthusiasm and that passion comes across, and and that helps to engage prospective donors that might otherwise be lost. And 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 then third, the third part of uh, of that is that follow up, that automated and programmatically automated follow up that that ties things in from end to end, which helps to catch a lot of those leads that might otherwise be lost. Thanks, that's a great question, Th thank you. Excellent, excellent. I see a new question from Sid. Why can't I just set up my own campaigns in LinkedIn or Facebook? Sure, and, and you know, that's, a, you know, that's a, a really great question, you can. Uh, however, it, I think the key answer is that to get good return on investment out of anything, you have to have some knowledge about how to really use those platforms and then how to tie them together. Uh, getting good results, yes, you can set them up yourself, but getting good return on investment is not so straightforward. Uh, a good analogy is, you know, can anyone ride a bike? Yes. Uh, can anyone win a bike race? Not so easy to do that. There's a lot more more to it than uh, can, meets the eye. And and as in the same way, there's a lot more to these engines, uh, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn, than uh, meets the eye. If you use a lot of the default settings, you don't know what you're what you're doing. Uh, you're not going to get very good results. And and there's just literally billions of dollars of of ad funds. In fact, you know. Facebook and Google get a lot of their ad money from businesses that really are just dabbling in it and don't know what they're doing. And so they waste a lot of, uh, a lot of their time and effort because they're, they don't know how to get to the right audiences. Um, and, and, you know, a vortex that we've des described has multiple steps linking them together. Uh, we're optimizing them and uh, getting the, the automation, getting all that to work together is, is not so straightforward and it's wise to get professional help. Barbara asks, which social media platforms and which types of social media targeting have you found works best for your clients? Mm, th thanks for that question. Which one works best? Uh, the best answer is probably it depends. <laughs> uh, in, in terms of of, of social media platforms, it, it depends upon the audience that you're trying to reach. Uh, for example, uh, for some, for a number of ministries, we've had great results uh, trying to reach high net worth individuals using targeted LinkedIn campaigns. And uh, that's worked better even than using Facebook or Instagram. Uh, for our other clients, uh, that are or have perhaps where when they're trying to do a campaign that's broader, we've found perhaps that Facebook or Instagram has has worked better, uh, and it hasn't worked so well on LinkedIn. So, um, it, in terms of uh, I would say the the social media targeting methods, uh, I would say as a general rule, and and, and Gregory mentioned some of those uh, the category marketing the uh, look-alike marketing, uh, the various ones that you can use on those platforms. As a general rule, we found that the look-alike campaigns where you're, you're uploading a list, you're using that as a, as a seed audience, and then you're, you're creating new audiences, that has in general been, been the best 
had had the best results, uh, worked better than broad category or or uh, interest marketing. So thank you. Good question. Renee asks, are people actually donating to ministries right now? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Certainly, uh, donations are uh, have been down across the board uh, for all ministries, and we've seen that churches ministries. However, I can say that those ministries that have remained or increased their activity on the digital platforms, uh, those are the ones that are, are, have been getting donations. Uh, the ones that have been putting the worms out, to the ones that have been out fishing, th those are the ones that are, that are getting the results. So while I think donations have been down, uh, you have to be active, uh, you have to continue to be active, uh, there are donors out there. Um, it may be a challenging environment, but uh, but you got to keep at it and and just get that get out there, and that's where right. you get donations. That's right. Rosa asks: There are so many digital advertising options. How do I figure out which one I should use? Good, another good question. Uh, I, the answer there also is a is a it depends question. Uh, the the best you have to consider the type of ministry it is, who the audience is, where the if you're looking for donors, where that audience is is most likely to be, what are their interests. The best is uh, to set up some mini tests, run them, and then optimize them for for the best results. I mentioned earlier depending on the campaign and the ministry for some have worked better on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, others have worked best on LinkedIn. Uh, others. So it, it depends on that audience. Uh, the best way is, is to try some, some smaller test campaigns, monitor them, optimize them, and then focus on, on the method that gets the best results. Uh, make sure you're using some good statistical analysis to uh, analyze your results and, and how you're, uh, what's coming out of it. Uh, use techniques like A-B testing, Champion Challenger, uh, both require some good marketing campaign tracking and follow up in order to uh, make them work well. Uh, it's good to get help to you know do this unless you've got a, a degree in marketing and statistics. Again, you know, A B testing, of course, is is when you have uh, two options that you're testing and you put out uh, uh, you put them both out and then you see which one is the winner and then you you put the most money then on the one that works the best. Champion Challenger is when you're already doing a campaign and you run a small test at the side to do a variant of that and see uh, what which variant worked works better. Uh, so there's really a winner there. It's it's a champion challenger. So those are some of the techniques that uh, that that we use uh, when we test campaigns. And so you ought to do the same. Thanks for that question. Yeah, good question. When it comes to chat bots, Carol asks, how do I staff a chat bot? I can't sit by the computer for hours to be there instantly to answer a question. Hmm. Good question. Uh, a chat, the, the purpose of the, the primary purpose of a chat bot is to answer some initial questions using kind of artificial intelligence. So to, to set up a chat bot, you have some, uh, you, you're looking at answering common questions and uh, they're getting pretty, pretty good at, 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 uh, at, at discerning and, and figuring out wh which answer to point to people to. Uh, you'll, so you'll need to anticipate some of the more common questions and answers. Uh, it's always a good idea to have a, an option for somebody to talk to a live person uh, to avoid that end user frustration. The good news is that, that a lot of chatbot systems uh, allow you to schedule different people to be able to answer questions that the chatbot can't answer uh, during different hours of the day. And so when a, uh, when a chat message comes through, it can actually be forwarded by a text message to whoever is on call during that time. Uh, so they don't have to be sitting at the computer waiting for, for the question. They can just get it on their, their phone and if it's their time, they can answer it. So it's it, there, there are some tools to help you manage that. But uh, so the idea is that you're, you're not having to sit in front of a computer to, to answer questions. A good question though. 
Very good. Sid asks, what or which works better to get donors engaged, webinars or free downloadables? Hmm. Very good question. Well, each works in, in, a, in a different way. Generally, we found that the ebook downloadables work uh, better at, at getting emails, at, at quickly getting an email address, but don't necessarily result in conversion to a, a straightforward conversion to being a friend of the ministry or a donor versus a webinar we've found has worked better in the long run to get conversions and, and to get someone to actually become a, uh, a, a friend of, of the ministry. And our theory behind that is that eBooks tend to get a few minutes of, of in, immediate attention and somebody will say, okay, I'll, I'll give an email so I, I can just get this quick thing that I can uh, read through versus a webinar when you have somebody engaged for 30 minutes, maybe 60 minutes even, you're able to convey a lot more of that portion. It, it's much uh, much more of that that passion, that that enthusiasm than, than you could through an ebook. And that's our theory as to why webinars ultimately result in, uh, in, in converting more people uh, in terms of passion and, and getting more donors. So thank you for that question, good question. Excellent. Well, I don't see any more questions, so that will conclude this presentation. Again, we are so thankful for each and every one of you. Make sure you download this presentation as your free gift. Take us up on that offer to reach out to us and get a consultation and as well as a ministry grant applied to your project. We want to help you. We want to see you get your digital lead generation vortex for donations up and running. Ron, do you have anything you want to leave with our attendees? Yes, uh, be bold. It's time to launch your digital donor lead generation vortex. Uh, give us a call and, and we'll, we can help you get that going right away. Woo, let's do it. Thank you, everyone.